This is the second part of problem 14.31 in Russell's iGenetics third edition. In the first part, we determined what the comp what the genotype of the parent was uh, who is making the gametes that show up in the test cross as the phenotypes that are observed. But we don't know the order of these loci. In order to describe the phenotype of the parent properly, the correct notation would mean that these four loci should be in the correct physical order. So what we need to think about then is what's going on. So let me draw a pair of sister chromatids. Where the centromere is does not matter in this kind of situation. Uh, it only would matter in a in a ordered tetrad. So let's imagine we have four loci W, X, Y, and Z, and on one, uh, let's say, homologous chromosome, they would be all wild type and the other would be all null. So they're in a specific order, and the order in which they are can be determined by the frequency of the phenotypes observed. How is that? So drawing this little map can help me understand that. If there's no crossing over, I would get parental x w x y z and plus 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 but if there's crossing over one place let's say between w and x in this case then i would expect to get w plus 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 and plus x y z as the phenotypes so we see in this case that crossing over between w and x would produce a reciprocal pair in which W has uh, done something is different in this reciprocal pair than it is in the parental pair. So we see here that W is different than it is in the parent. So W has done something different. And the frequency at which we see this pair of, of gametes will depend upon the distance between W and X. So keeping that in mind, we look at this. So we already know there's two linkage groups. One of those linkage groups is just the locus E. So it's not of interest. There's no distance there. There's no order there. What we care about is A, B, C, and D. So, also, so we have groups of four because we have pairs of reciprocal pairs because the E independently assorts and A, B, C, and D create reciprocal pairs of interest. So let's ignore E. I'm just going to ignore E. It's not of interest anymore. And I'm going to look at these. Now look, if we have uh, no crossing over parental, then one time crossing over can occur between W and X, X and Y, Y and Z. So we have three, we have, we have parental, we have one crossing over, one crossing over, one crossing over. We could also have two crossing over of three kinds, which we're not going to look at, and that'll be obvious why. And we could have one kind of triple crossing over. How many different gametes would this be? Well, each of these events would cause a pair, so we would expect to have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight times two, so we expect 16 different uh, gamete classes this way. So we expect eight pairs, eight reciprocal pairs, 16 kinds of gametes. Then if we factor in times two for, for locus E. Here this is for A, B, C, and D. For four loci we would expect to have 16 different gametes. So we see 16 different gametes and but only we are actually only seen, we see groups, pairs of reciprocal pairs become two, so we're actually only seeing parental, a single crossing over, a single crossing over, a single crossing over. What's going to be most frequent? Crossing over between the two loci adjacent to each other, which are furthest apart. Okay, th this can be a little bit confusing, so I'm going to slow down a little bit here. So the question is, in this most common uh, recombinant pair of reciprocal pairs, what happened? Where was crossing over? It happened in one place. Where did it happen? So if we compare one of the parentals to any one of this reciprocal class, let's say the first one here, let's see, A is different, so I'm going to circle it. B is the same. C is different. D is different. So that means that A, C, and D 
followed one pattern while B did something else. So B did one thing, or in this case, didn't do anything, and A, C, and D were different. How is that possible? Well, we can imagine it's just like here in this hypothetical W, X, Y, Z. If crossing over occurred when W is on the end, then everything else is the same, but W is different. So this means that B is on end. So B is on an end. That's all we can say about that now. And it happens at what frequency? We'll talk about that in the third part. Here what happened, if we compare again one of the parentals, any one of the parentals to any one of this recombinant class, I'll use the first and first for convenience, I see that A is different, B is the same, C is different, D is the same. Well, what does that mean? Well it means that A and C did something differently than did B and D. So how can that be? Well that means that B is next to D and A is next to C. B is on the end so it must be we're going to we can infer from this that and I'm going to include the next one too that it's B then D. Now we don't know which one is next so we need to look at this next class and this will be the only thing we need to look at beyond it. There aren't any double uh, recombinant classes and the triple recombinant class is not shown presumably because those are so rare that in a thousand observed uh, progeny none of that class came up. So if we look at the very first parental again, same one, comparing to the very first, doesn't matter which one, but sticking with the pattern, we see A is the same, B is the same, C is different, D is the same. So what does that mean? That means C is different. C somehow separated from A, B, and D. How can that be possible? It's possible if C is on an end. So C is on the end as well. B is on the other end. So that means if C is on the end, then A must be next to it. So we have B, D, A, C. So this is the order. What we've determined now is the order. So now we know the order and we know that E is on a separate linkage group. So I can show you the map of these loci here, B, D, A, C, and that's the same. It's the same as C, A, D, B, right? And in proper notation, I'll keep that. Underlines show those are separate linkage groups. So now what we want to do is we want to show the phenotype of the parent being test crossed in the proper order. We want to rearrange these in the proper order. So I'm going to rewrite, I'm going to rewrite this down here in the proper order. So first is B and on top I see B is plus. And then the next, so I'm going to draw it like this, B is plus. I already know E so I'm just going to put E here. It doesn't matter which one's on. So, so B is plus over B. Next is D. D is D null over wild type. Next is A. A is wild type over null. Next is C. C is null over wild type. So if I use this in a slightly different notation, this then is the answer. This is the answer showing the proper genotype of the parent being test crossed in which we show the linkage groups, the order, physical map order, and it also has this re uh, the cis-trans, as I call it, um, I prefer that, or coupling or repulsion, which one is on which. So that means that the parent, the parent of this parent, as it were, came from across. So this has a maternal or paternal chromosome that was plus D plus C, and the other parent of this was B plus A plus. And E, we don't know which one was which. We, we can't tell that. So this is the answer we're looking for. This shows in proper notation the loci of interest, the um, repulsion and coupling, the linkage, and the map order. I will show how to calculate map distances, approximate map distances, in the next section.